and I call the member for Hughes. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker. I'm pleased to rise to support this motion moved by the good member for Ford, who I know has great interests of the people in his electorate, the businesses there, and creating opportunities for those businesses to export for Japan. And we've seen, Deputy Speaker, the success of our free trade agreement with Japan over, over the past 12 months. Just look at some of the results, Deputy Speaker. Frozen beef exports up 32 per cent to $663 million. Honey exports up 66 per cent to $1.7 million. Mandarin exports up 65.8 per cent to over $8 million. Bulk wine exports to Japan up 52 per cent to $3.9 million. Shelled almond sales exports to Japan up 55 per cent to 3.6 million. Shelled macadamias up 24 per cent to $2 million. These export sales add wealth to the country. They create wealth, especially in our regional areas, Deputy Speaker. Strengthen them, income flowing into them, higher prices, good for the economy, good for the country. Is there any wonder, Deputy Speaker, that last year, Last year, we saw 400,000 new jobs created in this economy. 400,000, a record, because this coalition government understands that the way that you create jobs is you get government out of the way and you let the private sector, you give them opportunities to get in and sell their products and exports. But, Deputy Speaker, amongst all the great news of our increasing exports to Japan is coal. In 2016, Deputy Speaker, we exported, Australia exported, $11.1 billion worth of coal to Japan. Now, I know last year we had many members of the Labor Party, especially the, the soothsayer, the member for Port Adelaide, the man with the great vision of the future. He stood there and said that thermal coal exports were in significant decline. Substantial decline were the predictions for the member of Port Adelaide for coal exports. Well, Deputy Speaker, can you guess what happened to coal exports last year to Japan? Remembering that the member for Port Adelaide said that they are in decline. Well, Deputy Speaker, I'm proud to say here in the House today that Australia's coal exports to Japan last year increased 50 per cent to $16.78 billion. That was an increase alone of 5.68 billion dollars worth of coal. An amazing increase, Deputy Speaker. And yet, we had members of the Labor Party, their shadow spokesman for energy, running around the middle of last year telling all and sundry that thermal coal exports were in decline. Could he have got it more wrong, Deputy Speaker? And Deputy Speaker, is it any wonder, because Japan have currently under construction 45 new coal-fired power stations—45. And yet we, Deputy Speaker, have zero coal-fired power stations under construction. Japan's economy is going ahead, Deputy Speaker. They understand the importance of low-cost energy, and that is why they are building new coal-fired power stations. And it is not only Japan that is increasing their consumption of coal. Last year, the numbers are just in. We saw China increase their consumption of coal by 5.2 per cent. So we know, Deputy Speaker, we had all the experts from the Labor Party telling us the exports of coal to China were in decline. We saw last year China increase their consumption of coal 5.2 per cent. And to put that in some context, if we took our entire consumption of coal in all of Australia, every single last piece of coal, Deputy Speaker, that we burnt and we used to generate electricity, China's increase alone last year was double. It was double what we used, just their increase. And we've seen, Deputy Speaker, the International Energy Association, their forecasts for coal demand to increase. They expect the increase of coal to 2022 to be 5.5 billion tonnes up from the current 5.2 billion tonnes. As the President of the USA said in his State of the Union speech, we've ended the war on coal, beautiful, clean coal. 
It's about time the Labor Party joined with the rest of the world and realised that coal exports are increasing, not decreasing.